What up, everybody? This your boy, Bill Bellamy. Welcome to the number one podcast in the nation for the movement, the culture, and the discussion. Today, we have a special treat. We are are all about inspirational stories. We are all about making it happen, doing you, doing your hustle. This man exudes all the things I just said. He is a father, a husband. He is a digital creator. He is a entrepreneur. He is a a a a and R. He is a, a, a <laughs> spokesman, ambassador for the culture itself. We like to call him the lifestyle specialist because yeah. that's really what we do around here, representing the DMV to the fullest, Mr. Kenny Burns. Welcome to the spot, Big baby. brother on ah! my team. Kenny, I had to have you on my show. God works in mysterious ways. Amen. We were both on the uh, summit for Black Love, yes. talking about you know relationships and family um, and therapists and therapy. <laughs> hey, he did not want to go to therapy. He was like, he's like, therapy ain't everything. Uh, no, no, I, no I'm it. just messing. With you. I get it. But uh, we really, really have been friends over 25 yeah, years, yeah. and uh, it really dawned on me. Like, I'm like, wow, I'm super proud of your of your evolution Thank of you. from back in the day. I was an MTV. People don't know what that is now. If you're new to the game, I was a video jockey, and he was working in A and R in 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 the music game. Yeah. So you, when I first met you, you were working with Monica. Yeah, Monica. Wow, yeah. that was ninety six. Seven. Think about it. I'm I'm wow. spring breaking it right there. Ninety five, ninety six. Like we young in the game. Hip hop is bubbling. Hip hop is going pop right yeah, now. It's going pop. But I I want to give you your flowers because What's up? at that time we didn't see us. Like that on MTV. MTV right. was just beginning to Open double up. down on the culture. Absolutely. And you were the door. Yeah, I was to trying through. to be the I was trying to really be the ambassador for our culture in a way that um I thought was positive. Yeah, you were you know, always I, upbeat. I was and fun. upbeat and fun and yeah. I just wanted us to shine, you know, because back then, you know, in the early nineties, to be on MTV was a big what? It was the biggest. It was. It was like, yo, if your video got played on MTV, you made it. You made it. You made and it. And then you, you start crossed touring, over. You crossed. You crossed. You crossed over. over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and it used to get hell for that a little yeah, bit. It was kind of no, but today they they they're looking at that as the blueprint. Yeah. If you were not there, if you were not playing the music in the hallways, if you didn't have your friends coming up, and then they started doing little things that were kind of like ushering in the culture. But you were the connector. Thank you, bro. And without that, I mean, you know. I don't know. I, I'm taking you guys back on a journey really quick with uh, Kenny Burns and myself. Early 90s, MTV's opening the door. Uh, record labels are literally uh, taking chances on new artists. Facts. We have like Monica. We have Brandy. We got Jay-Z. Jay-Z coming up again. This is, this is when people don't even know like who Jay-Z is. Only cats in New York. He was, Jay wasn't he Hawaiian Silk first? Yeah, he was with Jax. Hawaiian <laughs> Sophie. Hawaiian yeah. Sophie, yeah. But his first First appearance. Okay. This is a fun fact, and you can put it up right now on the screen. Okay. He literally wore a 2620 shirt. You know, that was my crew, my party crew in Atlanta. Okay. He wore our logo. He His first appearance on MTV, he wore a 2620 wow. shirt. Wow. Damn. Yes. yes. Whoa. That's, yeah. that's, that's crazy. So people don't know. Uh, the evolution of a lot of the artists that we see present day, Facts. like uh, Kenny and I in New York City, we had the privilege of seeing everybody come through. Yeah. You know, Jay-Z's, the D Destiny's Child. The Puffs. The Puffs. You know, this is when he was, uh, he wasn't he wasn't love at this time. No. He was just Puffy. He was Puff Daddy. He, he, he was Puff Daddy, Puff, <laughs> Puffy, yeah. Sean Combs. Yeah. Like, there was an Still evolution. Still had six names, but it was derivative of one. Of uh, one. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and so here you go. I see Kenny Burns coming up in the game come over to MTV's like yo B man these are my artists now I don't know if y'all go back with your with a, a group called Dream yeah that was your first group that you signed that was the first girl group I signed with uh Andre Harrell got rest of the, the genius lifestyle original lifestyle specialist in in Puff and we went and you know we were second highest debut of uh of girl groups uh, Beat out Destiny's Child, actually, in that. The only ones before us were the Spice Girls, because that was some alien extraterrestrial that right. came in from another <laughs> they, planet. They came from out, they of, came nowhere out of nowhere. And blew up. Yeah, so that was that was an interesting time for me. I was a 14-year-old okay. white girl for a couple years. Right. <laughs> um, as they grew, I grew. And right. it was just amazing, you know. John, John, big shout to Johnny Wright. He put me on the Britney tour and the NSYNC tour. I actually introduced Puff to Johnny Wright, who ended up managing him for a year or so. Wow. After that. Yeah. See, you, you, your book, your book, 
It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, it's so, because my book, and is I know where all the bodies are buried. Right. Like my my thing uh, that I want the listeners to to really get from you is that you've always been a go getter guy. Oh yeah. Like you've always been the kind of guy that was fly, that was always moving and grooving. You always seemed to be in the right place. How did that happen? God, man, you know it's crazy. It literally, God. I think that as creatives, especially us coming up, and you were a VJ, you had a direct in, and were on the network, and you were doing movies, but. Creators like myself, there was no social media. There was no Damn. content to create. There was no body I could run to. Like, yo, but I could put this together in a way that can help you grow your business. You had to be a marketer, a promoter, an a and You had to be something specific for people to see you. And I like to think I've created that blueprint for entrepreneurs that may not know what they want to do, but have something right now they can offer and grow into the rest. And that's been the blessing of my life. God has given me, you know, the the ability to see humans in different forms, which allows them to come to me a little bit more authentically and emotionally connective right. than, than not, right? And then, you know, just looking at the journey, it's like I've always kept moving forward. I never That's stopped. That's what I'm saying. And this is this is why I wanted you to be on my show because, you know, as this being a new podcast yes. and it's very, very purposeful about the culture, and a lot of people don't understand what we mean by culture all the way. They like it. It sounds cool. But what is the culture, right? Yeah. The culture of hip hop, the culture of fashion, Facts. music. They kind of, it's, it's almost like a song or like a, a dope ass chord. Right. Like, because the culture to me is a chord that as soon as you hear it, you like it. Right. You don't know what that chord is. Is it a B? Is it C? Right. Yeah, you know, okay, you musical. Yeah, you know what okay, I mean? Okay, okay. You know you're a belly top belly musical I, I, on the way. I, I, but what I mean is the culture, you embody what the culture is. Like, I feel like you are a walking billboard for Thank what you. culture is. Thank you. And you exude a, a lot of cool. Now, how did you get here? Like, how did... How does a guy like Kenny Burns get to become a lifestyle specialist? Yeah, I, I want to address that, but I first want to say guys like you ushered in the opportunities. Okay. You know, um, before that, um, it was a lot of trial and error through experience. Mm -hmm. There's no school for what we did. Right. You know what I mean? There's no there's no blueprint. Yeah, you can't go, you can't go to two years and get an associate on this. You know I mean? So so kudos <laughs> to you. Another another bed of flowers for you. But I started out, you know, I was a hustler. Washington, D.C., single parent. You know, I don't know if you know anything. I mean, I know you do. I don't know if the listeners out there know anything oh, they about, know about D.C. In the, in, the the 80s. in the 80s. 80s was crack crazy. Crack era, um, a lot of money, Howard University, um, you know, all this energy coming to Howard, staying. Um, if you look at the sound, love, you know, Herbie Lovebug had, that was go-go. Yeah. That's my, you know, that's Sound my native pepper. music, right? Do your research, You people. feel me? And so <laughs> all of his sound, I think the sound that went and crossed over and big shout out to Herbie Lovebug, Salt and Pepper Kid and played the whole, Martin came out of that crew. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I'm looking at this as a young and like, but I'm in the street. You know, I'm, my father was a hustler. You know what I mean? My granddad was, so I'm, I'm, I'm a hustler. And that's what I was taught to do. I got locked up my senior year and um, having done all the, you know, the real party stuff in D.C., going to Puff's right. parties when he was at, at Howard. You know, I was in, like, the 10th grade when he was at Howard. You know what and I mean? you so sneaking in the, in the college I'm, parties. No, but I'm in there with <laughs> bottles of champagne <laughs> and jewelry. Like, what is that? Before I'm like, people was doing this stuff. No, I'm, was popping I'm bottles, telling you, right? So when I got locked up my senior year, my cousin had went to Morehouse. Okay. And he was like, yo, Kenny, you got to come to this freak name. I'm like... <sighs> Well, you know I'm on probation. I don't know if I could leave. Oh man! He's like, you got to come to Freaknik. People whatever you, people whatever you what got Freaknik to do, is. you got to come to Freaknik. Freaknik like, is crazy, right? So I go oh to Freaknik 1992, oh. and I have never seen a black oasis of excellence. Listen to me, like this in For my life. For the people that are listening right now, Freaknik 9123, yes, was like Wakanda before yes. Wakanda. We knew what it was. It's the black oasis of black women Excellence. from every school yes. from all over the nation converging on Peachtree. Uh, not, not, not a beach. Well, no, actually in the AUC, <laughs> right? It, it, it got nasty and Peachtree came oh, yeah. about a 94 or 5. Right, that's right, when, they, right, that's right. when they was on the freeway okay, with the, okay. with the grills. Shut down, yeah. shut down 85. Okay, go exactly. ahead. Exactly. But this, this particular year, 1992, I had never been outside of... DC in this way, okay. you know what I mean? I was I, I was blessed to have Howard University, you know what I'm saying, in the middle of the city and all the beautiful things that came from that. Okay. But the crazy piece was I went there and I saw all these people from everywhere in the country and they were like me. And I'm like, wait, what are you doing? They're like, I'm political scientist. And I'm like, 
You know, I didn't care about school. You know what I mean? Right. So I was like, immediately, like, I'm not going to Morehouse because it's an all boys school, but I got to figure out which one of these institutions I want to go to. <laughs> and I was like, Clark Atlanta, because Clark Atlanta was popping. Like, How you know, you got Morehouse, Spelman, Morris Brown, and Clark Atlanta that makes up the Atlanta University Center. But Clark was pop. Everything that happened happened on the strip. By, yeah. by by seagulls. That's the dollar hamburgers. By sheer magic, the oh, barbershop. It back. Cross from the barbershop. <laughs> Crazy thing is, though, I couldn't get into Clark Atlanta University. Morris Brown was the only school, the newly reaccredited okay. Morris Brown College. Uh, that's you. Um, but yeah, they, Shout they out accepted to the HBCUs, me. Absolutely, by the way. man. Saved my life. Yes. Saved my life. Seeing this, this, this. Um, this amazing sequence of humans wanting better. And that goes back to the thing you were saying earlier about culture. Yeah. People bastardize the word culture, but we come from a real thirst a for thing. knowledge of self. We Absolutely. come from real thirst of wanting better because we grew up fucked up. Yeah, it was right? crazy. So I think that people got to look at that and be like, yo, you know, when, when you have an opportunity to do better like what Deion Sanders is doing for Jackson oh, State. It's when you incredible. look at, you know, these these D1 five-star athletes going to historically black State colleges and, and universities. Turned, this, turned the entire organization around in 24 hours. Like, yeah. like what? De shout out to Deion Sanders, yeah, bro. We love Deion, you, man. Coach Prime. Yeah. You, Who was in Atlanta when I moved there? Right. First. And I actually known Dion so long that I actually went to his club pr on prime yeah, time. Prime like, time? <laughs> and he had Dion's 21. What? We had every. Cats don't know how dope. Style Dion. Yeah. Listen, cats don't know just how dope Dion has always been. He's yeah. one of them dudes that always stood out, always no was question. flamboyant, and he was always a guy no and a question. man of his word. So shout out to Coach Prime. Congratulations. Yeah. I, I like I like the uh I like your journey, man. I think it's very, very inspirational to 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 even and hear it from you knowing you now listening to the details of all the choices you are making yeah you know uh getting in trouble with the law get through that but now you want to go to school and you want to learn and you want to be in the right click but it feels like that's who you are like you continue to pivot and you yes. continue to evolve how how did you get from let's just say like where we were in the nineties, throwing parties, throwing yeah. parties, hosting parties to, to the music business, and, and to, to to the music in the music business, and then being a fashion designer. Yeah, no, bro. So the Atlanta scene opened me up to a music movement like no other. I mean, that the year I moved to Atlanta, Chris Cross had just sold four million records. Uh, you know, TLC was going crazy. Out of here. L.A. Reid, you know, and, Le and Babyface created LaFace. So So Death was on the rise. Dallas Rowdy Austin. Records, I'm yeah, like, with, okay. with Dallas Austin. J so, Jermaine Dupree. Yeah. And so <laughs> Dallas' his brother, Claude Austin, okay. he used to come to my parties because we had the AUC on lock, which yeah. then turned into having Atlanta on lock because we were in the streets a little bit. And he literally offered me a job saying that they had a girl named Monica, young girl, 13 years old, and they were trying to put this Don't Take It Personal single out. This is their second time trying to put this song out. And, and because I was always in the street, I just was always around people. I ended up giving a flyer to one of my parties to the guy that ran the Black Expo. If you don't know what the Black Expo in the South used to be, it, to be it was like Coachella yeah. for black people. It was a Black Coachella. Yeah, I mean, city to city. It was the Black Cella. It's the Black <laughs> Cella. And he put Monica on the tour. She came back gold off the tour, and the rest is literally history. Like, with me knowing what I could do, putting that play together helped Monica. Okay, well, I need more money. Dallas was like, I can only pay you the $19,000 a year I'm paying you. And it wasn't about the money more so than opportunity because I was still throwing parties. Absolutely. Making three grand a week. So it literally was me saying, I want some more money because I'm looking at Puff and I'm looking at all these people. They, and they coming up. And they coming up. And they I'm coming right there. Up, B. I and I'm promise two. you, I, I was right there. I seen it. I'm a freshman there, a senior. Yeah. But I'm, I want to be with you, my you, big brother. I want to be in Dallas. Like, well, I can't pay you that. I had said something slick about Dallas in a meeting. He ended up firing me. And from there, I was like, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do? Sam simultaneously, Damon Dash, Clark Kent, big shout out to Clark Kent, who put me on on after this. He introduced me to Damon Dash and Jay-Z. Absolutely. So we ended up doing a party. Rockefeller in the yeah, building. Yeah, we ended up doing a part. Rockefeller in the building. Boom. The Rock is in the building. Um, the yeah. Rock in here. Yeah. <laughs> No, but we yeah. like he literally introduced me <laughs> to those gangsta. guys. I set up, helped them set up their street teams nationally. You know, reasonable doubt end up going crazy, but that also put me on a trajectory where I could do things for multiple people. People, I don't have to do things for just just one, one label. Yeah, I can, I, wait, I can exist out here and do. Absolutely. And so that was my mentality. And then I met you know Andre Harrell, man, who taught me how to you know 
bring an ROI to lifestyle. Absolutely. The, Andre know, Harrell, for those who may not know, he is sort of the godfather of lifestyle, in my opinion. Oh, no question. He, um... He created uh, Uptown Records. Yes, uh, his story is phenomenal. He uh, he Coming ran soon. Motown for a while. Yeah, you know what I'm that's saying. That's where he hired me. Yeah, at Motown. That, that's when I met him. Clark Kent, who put me with Jay Z and Day, put me with 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 Andre Harrell. Yeah. He said Andre Harrell is giving white people salaries. Yeah, he's giving out real checks. He, I remember he said, that. He said, <laughs> I said, I said, what do you mean, Clark Kent? He said, Yo, I'm making seven hundred thousand. I was like, What? He yes. paid you set to do what? Yo, this is when the music business was popping. No, these Cash were was real getting real, real bread, bro. We're talking for the first 93, time ever. four, five. Yes. Cash for was the getting first bread. time ever. Ever, yeah. yeah. And so for that, for me, he taught me about lifestyle. He, You know, I saw what, you know, Puff was beginning to do with Sean John. I saw what, you know, uh, Russell Simmons had did with Fat Farm. And I'm like, I can monetize a bunch of different things, huh? Yes. And so my friends and I were growing up. We felt like hip-hop should grow up. And we made some button ups because we were putting that we putting that Brown, it on. You feel me? Brown, and I was like, "Yo, Ryan Kenny." Yeah. So Ryan, big shout out to Ryan Glover, my manager now, Derek Dudley, mm -hmm. and Derek. Big shout out to Derek. Dudley. Derek Dudley put up the initial money for Ryan Kenny. I want to say that publicly, but we took this opportunity, man. I came to you. I was like, "Bill, I got this thing." Yo, I need you to wear this thing. I, you have to wear this on your show. I, I like, will Please. never forget it. And I yeah. was like, "Who the hell is Ryan Kenny?" Yeah. And he was like, "It's me." Yeah. I was like, that ain't your name. No, that's the name of the show. Yeah. Just put it on. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I, I definitely remember that. No, and Absolutely. it was a vibe, man. And, and and luckily, you know, you did it. Jay-Z, Ashton Kutcher, Usher, all the people of that era that were dominating, put the clothes on. You know? Well, we, you know what? We trust you. You know Thank what I mean? You. It's like you've always been a stand-up dude. Like Thank you never you. was, you know, and, and that means a lot, bro. Real real talk in our business where, you know, cats move fast, money <laughs> right. move fast, right. cats talking slick. You've never been like that. you always been like, yo, B, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. you be yeah. like, yo, come to my spot. I, I remember one time I came to a party you was hosting, and I thought you was an artist. <laughs> I was like, yo, yo. Kenny, you got an album now. Right. This how I do my parties. I yeah. was like, yo, you actually got this shit popping. Yeah. He was like, you ain't never seen me right. do my thing. I'm like, ah! Y'all, see, Bill was so big back then. <laughs> I'm talking about he's still going to be always the biggest in my heart, but he was so big. MTV was so big. Like, to have him wear my clothes, oh, man. To, ha to have him speak on, like, even, you, you don't know this, like, and people have done it for me, but it, it means everything when people can talk about you in a room and you're not there. Absolutely. You've done that in several times. In a positive times. way. No, and, no but I'm, in a, yeah, in whatever yeah. way. I mean, but at the same time, yes, positivity is what you led with. But I'm saying you literally would do that. And you ain't had no real connection to me other than appreciating you know, my offering. Absolutely. And, and the same with you. But I think that's as, as authentic as it can get. This is what I love about, about the business. And this is a simple thing. Real recognize real. Period. Real Recognize Real goes to every facet of the game, Facts. whether it's sports, fashion, music. When people connect, they connect. Yeah. And a lot of times it's hard to connect with real cats because you don't know what page they on. Come on. But when you when you, you connect it. when you when you connect on with somebody that you know they authentically they are authentically themselves, that makes ah, let's go. What can we not do? We we can level up. Yeah. You feel me? Facts. And that's why I want wanted you on my show because I'm like, I want you to encourage other cats that's out here that's believe starting a t-shirt brand, cats that's, you know, you know, believing in their artists, cats that's doing artwork. Yes. You know what I mean? All of this is a part of the culture. Absolutely. You know, expressing your talent is a part of the culture. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You've you now you're a brand ambassador. You got your own spirits and stuff. Like I love how you got Things popping like I enjoyed your uh, LS. You. Is Thank LS you. cream? LS cream liqueur. Can we talk about that? Absolutely, man. Haitian, Haitian, Haitian cremas inspired. Mm -hmm. Of all my Haitian stuff, I say they know the culture and what cremas means to the culture. And my partners, Miriam and Stevens, they're from Montreal, but of course they're originally from uh, Haiti. They came up with this masterful taste. It is amazing. Yeah, and it'll get you fried. What? Yeah, it'll get you fried. And uh, but it, but it's amazing. And and I want to shout out Fawn Weaver. You know, Fawn Weaver. I was introduced to Fawn Weaver through um, an acquaintance. This is how life works. And this is I'm talking about how why why I know God has His hands on me. Um, I had left uh, Puff uh, and Sean Combs Wine and Spirits. We had just launched Delion Tequila, uh, Apple Ciroc, and Mango. 
Um, I didn't really get my percentages I wanted to get out of the equation. So I was like, I'm going to do me. Right. That's how I, I would do my whole I, career. I do my thing. I, I'm going to do me. I'm good. I'm, and, you, and ladies and gentlemen, you have to be willing to leave everything you know to get where you're going. Please do not let that go over your head. So I left, um, I think you remember this, I left here, L.A., mm-hmm. in 2017, uh, went back to Atlanta. Two months later, I met Fawn Weaver. Fawn Weaver is the reason I have L.S. Cream. But Fawn Weaver, ladies and gentlemen, she's the founder of Uncle Nearest Premium Whiskey, the fastest growing independently owned American whiskey in U.S. history. Her work, Period. Her work allowed Jack Daniels to finally give Uncle Nearest his due the on rights. being the first mm-hmm. master distiller on record. Which, if you go to the Jack Daniels distillery, you see an ode to him, and this is all because of Fawn. She also introduced me to the LS Cream opportunity. We have a $50 million fund where we help young, up and coming spirit brands, black owned, brown owned spirit brands, wow. like exist in the market. But of course, they can't do them all. So she called me one day and was like, yo, you have to taste this cream. I'm lactose intolerant, but this tastes like Jesus made it. It, bruh. I'm talking, listen to me. It is super not smooth, only, just with a little bit of ice. You don't yeah, need you really don't need nothing. You ain't got to do nothing. Just you Uncle Nears in that thing, we call it grandma's milk, but you be sleep. Yeah, you yeah, will be sleep. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> But but the genius is that she kept bringing opportunities, Absolutely. bro. And all I did was follow my intuition mm-hmm. and create, like, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I, I created influencer programs that all spirit companies use. I had a party at the Versace Mansion, my 35th birthday party. Uh, it was a $200,000 party. And everybody's like, how did you get them to spend the money? But I had did a favor for one of the uh, regions. You know, they had a problem with a club. I Here fixed the relationship. Here and, you go. and they gave me a $200,000 party. But that party had a billion impressions. I don't know if you remember this too, but back then, Star Jones and Al Reynolds were was the it? biggest thing. Yeah. And it was no social media like that. It was tabloids. You had to be in yeah, the you had to be People, in magazine, People magazine. Star, you had to yeah, be in the choir. And that my, was the internet and, then. and because they came to my party, it went viral. So I started to prove an ROI on lifestyle marketing because in the spirits world, they do these things with these, you know, clubs and and spend this marketing dollar, but they never really get, you know, the passionate thing that Ciroc was getting. So Grey Goose came to me like, yo. Can you do something for us? We got these flavors we've had forever, but Puff is killing the game. I was like, yeah, give me an opportunity. Cool. Six months later, we're up 498% in the market. Then they gave me $2 million on a credit card. I was like, do, do what you want. Sponsor Drake's tour. Just to, I mean, you know what I mean? But that's like how. But, but Kenny, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's why you're here today. Yeah, that's right. what I love about how you move. You make opportunities. You got to. You, you, you make opportunities you got that to. didn't exist because of the person that you are, right? Absolutely. And I like to believe when I look at your at your portfolio, you are you're what they call a connector. Amen. You grab, you match relationships, you bring them together, and you make them work, and yeah. you make them successful, yeah. correct? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, a, that's a trait that everybody don't have, bro. Yeah. It's a skill set, for it's sure. It's a skill set. And how do you balance, because you are a workaholic. Yeah. You know, when we were at the Black Love Summit, I realized that You've been married as long as me. Yeah. Like, like you, you don't put in some work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what is yeah. it, 20, 23. I'm 20, in my Jordan 20, year. Yeah, you're in your Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> how, how are you able to, to really try to balance, your, you know, and you really love your family, Absolutely. which I think is outstanding. Absolutely. You, you have a strong imprint in your family. How do you balance it at all? I never let my expectations exceed my efforts. And okay. I, that's in family and in business. Okay. You know, um, I have, you know, I want you guys to try this at home if you travel a lot for your business. I have a four-day rule. So I have to be gone on the first day and back to fourth. So that's been amazing, right? That you works. get that time to miss each other, but at the same time, get to go handle the business. Right. Um, we have a communication um, like I've never had with anybody, my parents included. Like I've never had the, the connection in a way I can be vulnerable. I can be super lit and just whatever. But she's going to take me as I am, then she's going to, you know what I'm saying, mold it back to what it has to, you know, has to be. Yeah, because I, I, I like, I like you and your wife's vibe. Like, y'all, y'all feel like a, like, like Mike, Mike, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, like back in the no, day. She, listen, like, y'all teammates. The respect, though. Yeah, in a respectful Absolute, way. You know no, what I mean? I like that analogy. Yeah, I think you guys, you, got, you guys make great teammates. We, we do, and I think what people <laughs> need to realize is that it's about that. It's a partnership. Absolutely. Who, who's going to make you better? Who's going to Put Who's going to make you play hard? Who's going to make you play, play hard? hard? Yeah, you need that sometimes. 1997, on, <laughs> on Lake Michigan, she told me I was Kenny motherfucking Burns, and I've been Kenny motherfucking Burns. Ever and that's, that's a strong statement. Absolutely. I remember um, one of the most prolific things I heard Magic Johnson tell me. Come on. And uh, this was when um, 
he found out he had HIV. Wow. And he, it, it, nobody knew at that time, you know, what that was. It's, it was like, I'm dying. Like, you just thought it was a yeah, death sentence, know, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so he comes home. And that was this, 60 this, years Hopefully ago. this don't make you cry because it's crazy. He said, yo, man, I felt so defeated and I felt like my life was over and I came home to tell him Cookie mm. and I collapsed on mm. the floor, right? And in the midst of this moment of fear and of, of not knowing what my future would be, she said, get off the floor. Mm. You're Irvin Magic Johnson. In that moment, I, said, I got goosebumps. <laughs> Woo! Irvin Magic Woo! Johnson don't cry on the floor. Yeah. Get off, stand up. Irvin Magic um, Johnson, I will get never off the forget. floor. I say, yo, when you need your wifey to lift you, oh was, yeah. my God, that's a crucial moment. Yes. Because you, Cause you, she don't know if she got she, it. You, she, she don't she, know what's what? going on. She thinking about you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. So, so, and black men need that. Yes. And that was one of the moments that I would just could never forget. And when you said, you know, how you feel about your wife saying to you, you're, you know, your Kenny yes. motherfucking Burns. That's 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 dope. Yeah, no, that's an, that's an affirmation. Yeah, and I want to tell all the uh, <laughs> people that want to be in relationships. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you have to know your partner. You have to know what you're getting into in the beginning of the relationship. Okay, because if you know who you're dealing with at the beginning of the relationship, like my wife told me, this gangster shit. This is some gangster shit. Okay, <laughs> I fell in love with what they all will fall in love with. Don't bang that shit to my house. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> that sounds like some shit Kenny Burns would say. Yeah, like, you know, some gangsta gangsta pimp. <laughs> And I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean, baby? What you talking and, about? And it kind of left it there for me Let, to define. Yeah, yeah. And I think that it was about respect. Absolutely. Don't make me feel no kind. I know you're in the, the people business. I know you sell fantasy for them, but don't make me feel no kind of way. Yeah, don't bring that to the crib. Don't bro. bring that to the crib. crib. No, man. And I, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> she keep That's me on my so, toes. I love that, man. Yeah, she keep me on my toes, and I need it. Now, you have, you also have have your own show, the Kitty Burns show yes. uh, in Atlanta. I was listening to you a couple weeks ago. Yes. I was just in the city. I didn't get a chance to, to catch up with you. Man, you really doing your thing. Thank you, bro. Because you have a, a really strong point of view. Um, how did you get to V103 and get back to the music again, so to speak? Yeah, so I came back to uh, radio during the pandemic. I went live because, um, okay. like all of us, we were trying to figure out one. What, how what's, gonna, what's gonna happen? How we're gonna monetize them? Right. <laughs> that was the first Ain't thing. nobody working. <laughs> right. But then, as I thought about monetizing something, I was peeling back layers on the onion myself that I e I didn't even know I exist because right. we're you know we're from an era where we're compartmentalized and we got to go get it. There's no option but you got to go get it. Right. Whatever that is, and. I got this. I got an opportunity to sit down and be still and look at myself and yeah, have that discussion that was, that with was, other people that were going through the same thing. We were all on the same playing field. I'll never forget that COVID shit. That yes. COVID shit was where everybody was equal. Yes. And everybody we were vulnerable. was equal. Everybody we our, was vulnerable. Yeah. And everybody couldn't go nowhere. Everybody didn't know if their kids could go to school or not. Yes. And so you have to face Man. certain realities. And my reality was is I wasn't vulnerable enough to my community. I always come ready to go, dressed immaculately. I'm smelling good. I'm right. I'm gonna deliver whatever the ask is for the client. I'm a, but I wasn't personable enough. You know what I mean? I didn't really have the connection that I yearned for okay. with my community. And I've always given back. All my mentees, all, you know, anybody who I've ever encountered says what you say about me. But I wanted to be more. I wanted to mean You could more, do more. Right? Yeah, yeah And that absolutely. gave me an opportunity to not only say that the things that were going on with me that identify with others, but it gave people a platform. The people needed a platform yeah. during this time. So during that time, I was already in negotiation prior to the pandemic. Right. I ended up jumping on because we needed the political message out in the community, uh -huh. which was, a you know, this was when Biden and, 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 and Trump were about to uh, go, for go, go for that. Yeah. And, and I had, you know, Biden on my show. I had Kamala Harris on my show. Um, I had Senator Ossoff. Like, you know, I was I was you, a main... you, you, you're politically inclined. No, I mean, for I, sure. I like I like that you care enough to to educate yourself in that arena. Yeah. Georgia is a, is 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 an interesting animal. It's, it's unbelievable. It's an it's an interesting animal. When I really started studying Georgia because I started I was helping with uh, Stacey Abrams yes. and also Keisha Bottoms. So this yes. is when I'm starting to like kind of like figure out what is Georgia like, right? Yeah. Georgia feels like 
a a a, a new a new chick that's starting to get good ways, but she got on rough shoes. Listen. And the shoes she still like to wear, but they rough shoes. Hey, and by that I mean it's like you got all this new vi- uh, vitality in yeah. the state. Vibranium. It's it's, it's vibranium <laughs> everywhere, no. but the old heads is trying to keep that vibranium yeah. from coming out the ground. Well, well, well let, me, let me break and, it down. Can you break it down? Right, let me break it down. <laughs> Atlanta is yes. Wakanda. Yeah, w- Georgia is Russia. <laughs> right, All right, right. It's, a, it's two different things, right? It's two different things. And the thing about you know what's going on, like yeah. that is hilarious. By yeah, the way, yeah. Atlanta is Wakanda. Right. Georgia is Russia. But it, it it literally, Georgia is the old mindset Absolutely. of the South. Absolutely, and you cannot forget that. And when you, I had to, you know, I told you I interviewed Joe Biden and, and Kamala Harris. I also interviewed Herschel Walker, the most painful interview in oh, the history man. of my it's life. It's really hard. Do, do you understand anything that No, said? you don't understand because the bottom line is when you're presented with facts, but yet you still go against the facts. And then after the interview, you want to call me. I like you. No, you don't like me, motherfucker. You know I have power and I just put you on front street. Yeah. So you want to have relationships so you can manage that. Absolutely. I don't fuck with you and the people don't fuck with you. And to this point. Canceling people is necessary sometimes. Right. Donald Dump, and I don't even say his last Donald name. Donald Dump. <laughs> play, the, play, the, play the shit fart noise emoji, please, right now. <laughs> but Donald Trump needs to be canceled. Herschel Walker needs to be canceled because they're dangerous to, to society, to humanity. Right. This man, Herschel Walker, is Chicken George. Uh, he is uh, every, yeah. every house nigga you ever met in your life yeah facts and and Not it's un, and it's unbelievable and it's that white women but, no and i, I want to throw this out there this you got me started white women mm-hmm. how could you vote for party in that how could you vote for herschel white because they voted for their party they they you know they look at the republican whatever the, i got to go down the list republican right but it's about humanity like you already had Donald Dump in office, grabbing by the pussy was his mantra. Yeah. And, and white and, women and, are deciding factors. And factor. nobody got mad about it. No, it's unbelievable. It's he, unbelievable. He called, he, let me breathe. Take he a breath. Calls Take a moment. Have a, a moment. He an have a, insurrection yes. and is not in jail. Yeah. He said, meet me down there. Basically, we're going to take back take, the take, government. Yeah, yeah. They did it with, and you aren't in jail. So this lets you know. And I don't want all the discouraged voters and and the voters that don't think your vote matters. It absolutely does. Yeah, that's why they discourage your vote. No, but the discouraging part for us is that when white women should show up for humanity, they go left. And it's like, let's go back to slavery. Your husband's raped, pillaged, had children. You stood by them. You go through history to today. They are raping and pillaging, but you still, and I'm not talking about all white men. Clearly we're not talking about all white men. But we're talking about the ones who are holding on to this ideology that the world has to be this way and not open to anything else. For women not to have control of their bodies, but you're still voting for people that publicly say, are you are you mildly I retarded? It. I don't understand how a woman could vote for a person who is denying you your right. Human beings. Not like, I don't get it. Right it now, Stacey, no you mentioned Stacey Abrams. We all wanted Stacey to win. We know she went and signed up a million registered voters and could not win. So you got to imagine, like, where, where the deciding vote? Yeah, black people, black men voted like never before. Right. Like never before. So we're in that, what, in that, in so that, in that you, runoff. So in, you in feel in the, so now we're at the runoff. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. In that in that race, and now we're on to a runoff. So so here we go. The, they had the race. This is for senator, right? This is for senator. This is for senator. It is Warnock versus Herschel Walker, yes. right? Uh, you two different type of guys. Two completely polarizingly different. Like it's absolutely crazy. Un, like, un, un, like, un, like, 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 like it's so unbelievable. Like, like Walk Herschel Walker to me is like what CTE is. Like he Fat, he's, he's like a he's child. a walking CTE situation and nobody's saying nothing. Yeah. Right? Like he didn't hit in his head a lot of times. He can't even talk, Bill. <laughs> Bill, he can't even talk. Bro. Like he can't finish how, a sentence without fumbling the ball. How does a person get to this level? Like I always you know, I'm going to keep it in layman terms because I'm not like this whole Mr. Political guy. But I, I, I would like to believe back in the day you get 
the smartest person from this camp. Right. You get the smartest person from this camp. You debate and you figure it out who is coming to the party the right way. That's the way I used to think hey, of dog. it. Now it's great like way to think. any. Do you have a kangaroo that rides with us? Okay, put the kangaroo up there. We'll tell the kangaroo what to say, and then we'll do like it's just so bananas it's now. It's like a show now. But it's not even humanity that people are thinking about. I think about human. I'm not. A, I don't. I don't. I. I do not claim a party right. after, after this unequipped, uncertified, it's unbelievable person is causing a runoff in an election that clearly should have been. I'm denouncing all parties. <laughs> I'm, I'm denouncing all parties. But it'll beat the brakes off you because it don't make no sense. No, but it's humanity. Vote for vote for who who we, loves humans. Right, right, right. Vote right, for right, people right. that want. Because see, the the problem is, and, and people listen to the words that are coming out. Of my it's going to be Hunger Games out here. Right. The way that they rule is haves and have nots. And it ain't no if there's in between. No middle class. If there's no foundation. What do you think is going? Y'all, listen. I know y'all know y'all in L.A. We on Hollywood Strip right now. Top buildings on Hollywood, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, right by the Popeyes, by the old <laughs> New America office. I used to work out. Of. But listen, <laughs> it, it is true. You see it. People running up on people having lunch. Yeah, man. Like it's getting people, bad. It, it's it, like the purge. It is going to be Hunger Games. Thanks. Yeah, because I, I feel that you're on to something. I think that we have lost our way as our compassion and empathy for people. And now y'all got an applause button in here. For yes, y'all yes. We, we have we have lost our compassion for humanity and our empathy because now we're acting off of greed and power. So when you when you're acting off of greed and just power, it knows no boundaries. Facts. So. It, it doesn't matter what women feel. They gonna they're gonna try to take their rights. Uh, the LBGTQ community ain't gonna try to take their rights. They're just gonna do everything for the power to control people. It, and then it's gonna be. It, and then it's gonna end up being a huge like reaction, like a crazy a tornado. It's gonna be combustible. Yeah, yeah people are gonna people don't, explode. People don't want to feel like that. That was one of the things that. I learned out of COVID was that people don't want to feel suppressed. They don't. They like, be you know, heard. when you're successful, you make a bunch of money and you travel and you do everything, you don't never really think about, like, you know about it if you came from it. But, like, what I honestly, honestly got out of COVID, being home and being not able to move, I was like, yo, this is... This is crazy yeah. because it was it was compounded the emotion of stress compounded not knowing when you would work again are you going to do another movie or can you fly right can I get home or what you, even is next like what's even next we is don't know. everybody going to be dead right like is everything going to be on this computer right. like what? <laughs> yeah. what what's what is going to happen so when I when that happened to me it helped me have even more compassion. It, had, it, it made like it made me want to do this podcast. Yes, bro. It made me want to do something for the culture, for people to listen to, to inspire, to learn, to uh, to be motivated. Yeah, bro. And and the one word you said, we should all tattoo on our foreheads. Compassion. Compassion. If you it's could easy. just, it, and, and it takes nothing to do. It takes no time. It's a light switch. Oh, you fucked up. I'm here for you. How oh, hard you is don't, that? You don't know where to go? Here's right the direction. There. Yeah. <laughs> it's really that easy. And I get so, you know, and, and, and I, I think we all would go crazy if we thought about why, right, all the time. Like, it'll drive you crazy. Like, yeah. how? How does Donald Dump even exist? Right. Like, how? Like, how? Like, how did that happen? How did that happen? How? It'll how drive did, you crazy. How, I'm how butt naked to the did, woods. How did we, how did we as a country, how did, did we as a country accept that type of behavior and made it normal. Like Facts. I could not at my job disrespect a woman and say nothing like you that. You can't. It's impossible. You couldn't like, walk down the street. Bill I couldn't you couldn't grab you couldn't, no girls. You couldn't let a person be, I don't know whose star that is right there, but you couldn't let someone getting assaulted and not run out there to do something. That's Absolutely. just who you are. Absolutely. But that's who we all, the majority of people aren't going to let that bang. Aren't going to let things. And, and I'm going to tell you what it's the rise of classism. This is why I keep going. And I'm talking about trumping racism. Right. Because they don't care about white poor people. 
They don't care about nobody. <laughs> nobody. They care about the money. To your point of power, they don't oh, care, they about care about none the power, of it. Man, it's 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 a uh, it's a it's it's a real fight for humanity. Like we're gonna have to Facts. look in the mirror, everybody, That's and a top say, "Feeling T-shirt." By yeah, the way, look in the mirror. Listen to this. We're gonna as a country. I feel like we're gonna have to look in the mirror and say who we are. We're gonna have pick, to pick a side. Pick us. You are not gonna be able to waver. Uh, oh well, you know. Sometimes I'm compassionate, but sometimes yeah. I just want my goddamn money. I don't give a fuck about nobody. Facts. You're gonna have to make a decision because that is going to dictate who we are moving ten years from now. Absolutely. We're, whatever decision we make now is gonna fuck up shit for twenty years. From Absolutely. Now. And we have to. You know, I think people. And that was the point of me saying, like, when people go vote, they look at the party, right. and when, whoever says Democrat or Republican, they vote for. Right, you got to start knowing the person who is on the ballot and what are they doing exactly. You know, we we I think now more than ever we know how important state you know state our state represent, representation is. Like, Absolutely, or, or if you don't are. know, you better learn. Yeah, because that affects your personal life right now. Right, the, now. and I want everybody to hear that. Who who is who's scared? Whoever's scared to vote and has not voted for fear of thinking it has nothing. Your state, your senator, your mayors, your attorney general, mm -hmm. all these people have everything Direct to do with your life Your today. real life. Your real life. Before we get to D.C., those people are controlling your the thing. Your governor, your senator, the mayor, the councilman, even the goddamn sheriff. The, dis, the, yeah, the, dis, top, the, 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 D, the DA, the top yes. DA in the in your state yes. is representing cases and things that directly affect your livelihood. Right. Or if something happened and your kid get in some situation, those laws are those Apply are state to. laws. Amen. So I learned politics from Ryan uh from I learned politics from um <laughs> who Somebody don't Roland know Martin. Oh, Roland. Roland he's Martin. A, he's an OG. I love Let him. Let me tell you what I love about. Shout out to my boy Roland Martin. Love him. Roland Martin can he give you politics for dummies? Yes. Like, like, like he can make it make sense because sometimes <laughs> it's it's just so overwhelming politics you can't understand it. Yeah. You don't know what this coalition and this amendment Facts. and are you oh. Facts. But Roland would be like, look, bro. Let me tell you how this thing exactly. goes down. Like he broke down the. You vote for that motherfucker. This is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. Yeah. Do you, Do you still want your teeth fixed? Yeah. <laughs> How's your dental program? Okay, well they they cover that. Right, right, right. So shout out to Roland Martin, we man. Him, we, man. We 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 uh, as we evolve as black men in this country. We have to keep adding pieces to our pie. Come on, you know um, we have to get educated on things that we're not so sharp on, right? Yeah. Because it's affecting our lives. You just said that. Like we need to get educated. That's why we do podcasts. That's why we have these, you know, uh, Black Love Summits and Absolutely. different places that we gather people together so we can start talking. And you're a great communicator. Thank you, brother. You don't mind talking. You got a strong point of view. Yeah. I'm going to tell the truth. You're going to tell the truth and you tell might not like it. You might not you like it. But you tell the truth. Can you talk about uh, your collaboration with Puma? Yeah. Which is one of my favorite. I'm not I'm just yeah. saying I love me. You did come in here with some Pumas. Puma, today. Puma lifestyle. Go nah, ahead. Yeah, no, we have an amazing relationship. I just came out with a shoe. Mm -hmm. Uh sold out of the first round. We have another uh What is the name of your shoe, bro? It's called the BRNS. Mm -hmm. It's be real, never sell out. That's our family business. My son started a clothing line, so it's the BRNS Puma G V. Um, amazing shoe. And um it will be re-released because the first release we did I think the major accounts or whatever they had going so we sold out of those accounts now we have Puma.com on November 30th okay and that'll be the next time so I can, can a guy a, like Bill Bellamy you're get gonna a get pair? him free I, absolutely I, I'm just saying like, Delana I, can you please send Bill a we, size 13 I mean I'm a 13 send him two pair yeah Um, and then whatever outfit yeah I want to be puma out too like yeah. I want to be fly like, like, like he always fly yeah, yeah. like I'm, I'm I'm fly cool but Ryan me, not right. Kenny Burns be fly, fly. Like, let me speak. Let me give you your flowers, right? Real thank quick. You, thank you. Come real on, quick. Kenny you. Burns. Help you ready me. for this? Help me. I just turned 50. I need some. He just turned 50, right? I'm watching your party like mm. a fan. Like, mm. I know you. I should have caught you. Yeah. I'm watching you your Prince called party. Me. I'm watching what? your Prince party, and I'm going, why am I not in Minneapolis? Yeah. That's how. That's how did you do it? It was so fly, bro. I feel horrible. First of all, you you saying that, and this has been the thing all week. I've been running into people, like, bro. 
Your party. I was like, why didn't you call Yo, me? Party My was son had brain surgery. Um, like, I'm going through a lot of things. Call me. I should have called. Bro, I was so proud of you. Your <sighs> 50th you. birthday, it was epic. Can I tell you, you know, a little, up, little, little, so <laughs> Prince was my father in my mind. Okay, yeah, when, when I saw that's your real dad. No, no, no. 1984. <laughs> I just, I want to take you on a journey. 1984. <laughs> when I saw Purple Rain, I was it, that's 11. your daddy. You knew, you knew no, that no, was going to be I saw daddy. the way he grabbed Abalone uh, by the neck from the back. Oh, uh, tilted her head up. Then he took the little finger and he went to the red lace and he said, "Oh, she went." And said, I said, "That's how you do it." That's how you do I it. Said, that's how you do right it. Right by Lake Monotonka too. And, and then, and from that moment on, you Prince was, has been like. My muse musically, like right. his his songwriting ability, the way that he Musician. paints the 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 word love musically is just brilliant. I mean, adore a perfect example. Until the end of time, I'll be there for you. You own my heart and mind. I truly adore you. If God one day struck me blind, your beauty, your beauty, I'd still see. Love is too weak to define. Just, just what, what you mean, mean to yeah, me. Yep, yep. You yep, feel me? Yep, so it was bro. a. I was. I was possessed. Bro, bro. I've so been you, advanced so you, since so eleven. You remind me of my boy uh, Ralph Par Porter. He's a comedian. How much he loved Batman. Yeah. Like you. You locked in. Yeah. Like he. He know everything about Batman. Like you know every Prince song. You every. Know every album. And I did my fiftieth at his house, Bill. Do you understand the level of What's like, the, and nobody, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, nobody's ever done a party in Prince's house but, he, Prince but Prince and his estate. I was the first outsider. How did you come Troy Carter. to? How Troy did you Carter. come to the idea that you wanted to do like a purple oh. rain? Please tell. That's my fans. barber, Ron Ooch. I call him Ooch. Ron, um, in a barber chair. He's like, "What you doing for your fiftieth? Right. Because you know I've done Versace Mansion. I've done a whole lot of incredible. Oh birthdays. yeah, I seen it. And so and so he was like, "What you doing?" I was like, "I don't know, man. I can't think about. It. Probably not gonna do one." He said, "Boy, you know this show, you got to do a video gave me, you know, big time." And I was like, "All right, bet. What you think I should do?" He said, "Do it at your father's house." And you know, my pops died January 1. I'm like, my dad ain't got no property. What are you talking about? My father's house. I don't have nothing to go to. You stupid. And, and literally, I was like, you mean my daddy, daddy? My, I was like, oh, <laughs> swear to God. I called two people, got Troy Carter on the phone. Mm -hmm. It was done. Done, done. And I had my 50th birthday party. 612 Bro, people flew to fly Minneapolis. Long Dope oh, the ass, you saw that. You saw that. The trench right there. with the rock star you glasses, the beard, the wife with the Saint Laurent oh, hair. Oh yeah, wife, you yeah. turned up. Ooh. You got the purple joint on with the with the little baby ass got a little. I don't know what it was. <laughs> silk, I man, you extra sexy with it. I mean, and the theme though. Was, what was the theme when you the, walked in your party? Did you what did it play? Had outfit change too, by the way. <laughs> The, the theme was 19, you have to give me your best fashion expression you is from 1984's Purple Rain okay. or 1986's Under the Cherry Moon. So you mm -hmm. had to give me your best version of that. So this purple jacket. It's crazy. I didn't want to do the studs on him because I'm going to wear that again. Okay. You, you, you're seeing right, that you, texture you, on that thing. Okay. So I had the the the, the, the uh, St. Laurent brooch that was big and diamond, but it's a diamond and a pearl. Like, I don't know if you saw that. But anyway, I had all kind of odes to him. The cotton, the thing you thought was the ass guy was actually a big-ass bow. Mm -hmm. I had the collar extended down to the waist, and I tied it up so it could be like a, you know. So it could droop a little so bit. So it could droop because I didn't want to do ruffles. That's not my thing. Yeah. And my ass wasn't out. You didn't have your ass out. No, I did not have my ass Kenny, out. Kenny, do not have your ass I never had okay, my ass out. I promise to God. Because I'm going to have to cut this interview yeah, short. Yeah, but I literally, <laughs> dog, my my, out, my second outfit changed. I got to get you. You have to have a reaction to this for your okay, fans right now right. that are listening all over the world. But I literally came out oh. in this outfit, bro. And when I tell you, when they you came to, out, did they say, dearly beloved, we yeah. gather here today for this thing called life. Alert you, right? Girl. That is exactly the song <laughs> that I came out to. If it was a mighty long time, no. but I'm here to tell you. <laughs> There's the, something else. There's something else. The, the afterworld. afterworld. So this is the uh, second outfit. <laughs> That's the second outfit. <laughs> Hold on. Wait till that thing turn around, Ooh. Bill. Yeah. I came oh, out you, to, oh, Let's yeah. go crazy. Let's go crazy. Let's go crazy. Yeah, it was a move. Punch your high flow. Boom, boom. Now, hold on. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Because you're slightly older. Yes. How was it? Because you was outside. No, no. Listen, you, no, 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 you was fucking when that came out. You was outside. Yes, sir, I was. So if I, it, yo, how was that, bro? Like, Because for me, it's like a soundtrack of my life. So Purple Rain, let me tell you. Purple Rain came out. I, that was the first movie I ever went to where I waited 
in the line like a nightclub. How old were you in 1984? Come on. 1984, I think I was probably 18, 19 years you old. You was outside. Yeah, outside. I was, I was, you was gone. fucking. Yeah, and... yeah, I had a life. I was yeah. doing my thing, but I wasn't Bill Bellamy yet. I was, I was Bill was Bellamy in the making. Before the player. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I wasn't how to be a player. So Before how to be a player. Think about this. Player. Think about this. Lying around the corner, as far as you can see, like a nightclub. I've never seen this for a movie in my life. Purple Rain is the only movie I've seen six times. Round of applause. A true Prince fan. I think I've seen it, honestly, a hundred. I've seen that movie six times. Like, I went again and again. Oh, you said back then? Back then. I okay. went. I never know. I mean, I, that's, that's a lot I yeah. put on it. But cut to, who would have guessed this is very, very, very... Uh, Sort of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This is uh, very serendipitous mm, of uh, big words. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, college and shit. So, yeah. real, real talk on how life works sometimes. Right place, right time, a little luck, right? So, do you remember when Prince changed his name? Yes, because he was to going, the symbol. He to the symbol because he was going back and forth with Warner Brothers, exactly. and he was not, you know, he didn't own his own mm -hmm. likeness. Okay, cool. So, I'm interviewing him at. At the studio is called Paisley Park. Paisley right? Park, yeah. Paisley Park. So and you were there. You've been so there. So I get to meet Prince for the first time. Wow. True story. Wow. I'm nervous. Yeah. Because I'm like, I don't know how this is going. I always thought Prince was a vampire. Yeah. Like yeah. I felt like he might be half human, half vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Blade is looking for him. But <laughs> whatever it was, I was like, I hope he, I hope he don't put a spell on me because I didn't yeah. know. You heard the rumors. Don't, I heard look the in rumors the like he's, don't look in his eyes. Yeah. He got on eyeliner and he got a little fluffy hair. Yeah. I ain't know what was going Ass on. Might be yeah, out. You, you never know. And he got on boots that glow up. Yeah. So anyway, he comes in there. I'm sitting in there with the camera guys or whatever. And we, everyone's like, Bill, whatever you do, do not call him Prince. Right. This interview will be over. Do not, do not repeat after me. He is the symbol formerly known no. as. Okay. And sure enough, I, he woke up. I'm like, symbol. Because <laughs> I was about to say Prince. I, can, I, was, I was like, symbol, my man. Whoa. Whoa. He was like, it's all right, brother. It's all right, man. I understand, you know, it's going to take a little bit of adjustment. That was his regular voice. Wow. I didn't know. I thought he was like, hey, man. Yeah. High, high pitch. High. No, his yeah. regular voice yeah. was deep. Yeah, he so had deep voice. Like, and he little. And he little. And he was mad cool. Right. He was super cool. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he the, hooped and everything. He did everything. Yes. Prince was such a cool ass man. Like, just like. He was like a regular dude trapped in a musician's body. Yes. That is that what? Yeah, they are delivering food. They got delivery it, robots. Humans aren't gonna be oh, necessary. Okay. Don't, nobody have a job. We're live on Hollywood for those oh, listening. We live on Hollywood Boulevard in a in a goddamn cart with wheels with a flag on it. Just <laughs> went by with no remote control. Like one of these bums on the street can't take the <laughs> goddamn pick. They could pick that up and take it in the alley and jimmy the <laughs> jimmy the lock. So did you have any performances at your birthday party? I had D Nice, oh. DJ Clark Kent pick it, pick it. and uh DJ E class. You know, I wanted it to be about the party. You know, I've done so many things yeah. where artists came and it stops and then people want to talk and then this next thing you know, you got to go. Oh. I wanted every moment in Prince's house to be about our, our fellowship, our love, our respect and admiration. What a, for what, a, what a wonderful way to do it, too, because, you know, he 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 is one of our legends that we hold close to the vest. Man. Like, um... You took everything that came with him. That's the first person we did that for. Yeah, we didn't, man. we didn't, I don't even, I can't, and I don't, I wasn't, as you know, old enough in the mix trying to, or hearing what they said about Prince, but right. I never got any gay anything about Prince. Mm -mm. They, everything I ever saw, even what I saw in the Siobhan, in the in the silk, in the satins, yeah. even what I saw. He was I still, pulling chicks like crazy. No, he had then. the baddest. Have yeah. you ever? I met Apollonia at the bar him. in Westwood him. at the I W. Had, I had to ask him. What'd you ask him? I asked him. I Did said, uh, I said, uh, I said, Roger, be honest. <laughs> What's up? Prince I Rogers said, Roger, um, talk to me, man. Every time I seen you, you was with it. something that is speechless for yeah. me. Like, I've never seen you with a woman that looked just almost All right. fly. Yeah. Almost just fine. He always had a woman that would steal your breath away. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, 
I've never seen you with a woman Ever. that was regular fine. There's always like, what is that? He made you say, what is it? Yes. What is it, right? What's and, her nationality? And he Where's said, she from? Um, you know, it's crazy. It's, um, they just come to me. I don't know how and why. I got, my daddy, just peace my father. I got one story about Apollonia right here at Westwood, the W. Okay, go. Uh, there was a publicist. I forgot her name. She was like, she knew how much I love Prince. Mm-hmm. And she represented Apollonia. Apollonia. Oh, so she was like, yo, we're at the W. Baddest red bone at the time. No, the, and then I, I, yeah, the oh. epitome red bone. That's, that was, she was in the museum, the museum of red bones. Amen. So I literally, I'm at the, I'm, I'm at the W in Westwood. She says, Kenny, where are you? She knew I was in LA. So I was like, I'm at the W. She's like, I'm downstairs at the bar with Apollonia. I was like, chill out. Don't say that. I was like, chill out. She's like, I'm, at, I'm downstairs. I know you want to meet her. It's a perfect time to do so. We got like an hour to kill. Right. If you come down, I can guarantee you can meet her. Say less. I'm on my way. Got a shower. <laughs> say, say, I'm, try, he had I'm to trying take to figure. A shower. Out. Yeah, I had to take a shower. You can't go down there smelling like you've been through the day. You got to right, right. You go down there. there fresh, fresh. How to be a New East and No Ho Bond Number Nine. Right. Oh, they you're change, going to get it. They changed the uh, the the what's the pH balance? So that's not, I'm not suggesting you buy that now. It smell a little different, but I put it on when it smelled good. I went downstairs. I got I got to the door. <laughs> I got Bill. I got to the door and I was looking at the door and I saw her at the bar, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking like, let me text her, tell her to come over here and tell me how to approach the situation because I don't want to go fan. I, I was scared. No, but no, and I'm a player, bro. I am a legendary you on your swag. Slave. You walk over there and you no, address but, that. But let beauty, me tell bro. you how I did it. You got scared. No, I did, but okay. I got I got it together. Okay, go ahead. Came over. She said, "Kenny, it's all good." She's looking forward to meeting you. I told her how big of a fan you were. Mm-hmm. I said, "Say less." <laughs> I walked through the door. It was like time stopped, bro. Now, now mind you, I'm married. I'm married with you children married, at this right, time. Right, right. But I'm. But you're just having a moment. No, no, I was ready to risk it all. You I was ready to risk it all. <laughs> so I'm making my way over to the bar, right? I'm ready to risk it all. <laughs> I'm making, and mind you, she has to be in her sixties. So I'm like, I'm. <laughs> you ready to throw it all? I, actually, the bar. she wasn't then. I don't know how, how much old is that. But I don't know. But okay. she's older than us. She's older than us. Okay, so long story short, I get to the bar and I'm frozen. She's looking me dead in my eyeball. And you don't know and what And starts, do. no, she's staring, like looking at me, not smiling. And then she gets me and smiles. I'm like, oh, shit. And I immediately said, how cold was the water in Lake Minnetonka? We talked for three hours. <sighs> That line got the, me a three-hour con- We went from the bar to the seats. We had drinks. Y'all was I got vibing. a picture in my house. You had with, time to go to the bathroom, come back. Dog, we had a, a legitimate, <laughs> like, bonding session. Bro, that is, you You willed that to happen, though. Amen. Because, because you were, you you locked in the Prince, and so you got all that derivative stuff. So right. when is your Prince album dropping? Yeah, I don't have no. that. <laughs> We'll talk about that off air. I can't have anything pressed. Anything <laughs> so, right Kenny, now. So, Kenny, man, listen, this this interview has been a journey. It is really uh, a wonderful thing that you came by. I know you are liter- literally going back to Atlanta. Yeah. What's what's next? What's next? Can we uh we look forward to? Yeah, man. The TKBS Nation conversations are happening uh wherever you find your podcast. Um I have since left uh, that station you mentioned earlier, okay. and I'm you up moved for on. a syndication okay. situation in the new year. It's uh, going to happen. Yeah, amen. I already know you. Amen. You're going to wind up. It's going to be 100 markets, all that shit. Yeah. I get it. I appreciate <laughs> it. Whenever I uh, invite someone on the show, uh, our special guest, we have a segment called All Facts. Right. And this is where I ask you a question. You just tell the truth. Tell it like it is. Come on. How you feel it. All I'm right. Ready. Give me your top five clothing brands of all time. Wow. Top five clothing brands of all time. The ones that. Time. Not boom. in a particular order. No, nope, we five. can say. All right. I got to say Ralph Lauren. Boom. Um, I got to say St. Laurent. Boom. And St. Laurent would be number. I can't say no numbers. St. Laurent, Ralph Lauren, um, Puma. Boom. Ah! Ah! Smart. Uh, good answer, good answer. I think that I have to throw in uh, my custom my custom clothes, like jacket you saw. It was Come custom. On. That's Hideaki Bespoke. Come on, So man. I like my custom look. So Come on, big bro. shout to Diedrich and Hideaki. That's four. And then I would have to go. That's a great question. It's good. It makes Because you're a this, fashion yeah. guy. Yeah, I know. You're going to leave two out. Because I know you. I yeah. know it's two of them that you want to put in. You only could get one more. What you got? I can only get one more. Okay, damn. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ooh, that's, I mean, that's yeah. tight. Five is tight. Yeah, no, five is tight. Because everybody got a, you got 10 in your, in your, but five is narrowing it down. That's it like is. top five rappers. Damn, I can't all. even think. What did I wear out here? I'm trying to think of something in my bag. I had to have. Come on, man. Damn it. Top five. You top got five. So Ralph we said Ralph, Ralph, Saint Laurent, Eve Saint Laurent, uh, Hideaki Beach Boat, Boom, Puma, and Come. Um, that's a good. What are the two you think I'm thinking about that I'm not thinking about? Uh, help I, me, help I, me, help I was going. To, I was going to say Tom Ford, Tom Ford, because you're the suit. You like the rock. Yeah, but Could that's my. But that. that's my custom though. So my custom guy handles all that. All right. Okay. Cool. And then the other one I would think uh, with you would be either uh, Gucci or Balenciaga. <sighs> Gucci is one of my favorite brands. That's what I'm saying. I'll like, put Gucci in there. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah, love Gucci. I yeah, because Gucci. Gucci done got flavorful, you know, with their Gucci stuff. Gucci was amazing for a they, long time. They, they, and they, they had Tom Ford, by the way. Yeah, but see, what I like about Gucci, they have evolved and got, like, some swagger and flavor Absolutely. and color schemes that make them really, really fly yes. right now. Before, it used to be kind of conservative. That's a great fucking question. I like that. That, yeah, was, that's a good, that had you, me thinking. Yeah, because you you're a fashion guy. Yeah, no facts. All right, here we go. Here we go. We, you, five things, five things, all facts, Kenny Burns, five things that you have to have in your arsenal to be considered a lifestyle specialist. Ooh. Uh, number one, confidence. Bam. Uh, number two, authenticity. Bam. Uh, three, the ability to tell the truth even when people don't want to hear it. Three. Uh, four, um, you got to put that shit on. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to be able to show up how you want to be received. Okay, uh, five, and I mean, put that shit on. Get dressed. You have to. You have to show up show how up. you want to be received. I like that. Yes, we talked about Aunt Lena. She said, "I'm not saying fake it till you make it, baby, but you got to do something to get something." <laughs> we love you, Auntie. Okay? Yeah, and number five, mm -hmm. most important, value partnerships. Value partnerships and the people in those partnerships that's a double entendre yeah I don't value know partnerships that might have went over that. there that might have went over some people head yeah. you heard what he said value mm. value partnerships is key mm. to being successful facts so your connections your confidence your ability, ability truth. to tell the truth Bro, authenticity yeah. that got to be in, that got to be in your book. Yeah, come on, stop playing with me, everybody. Let's give a round of applause for Kenny Burns Thank for stopping you, by man. Top Billing right here on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. Just tell her, tell the people how they can follow you, man. I want them to be a part of your life, a part of your brand. I appreciate that. Uh, at Kenny Burns on all platforms, at the Kenny Burns Show, uh, at TKBS Nation, and um, at BRNS Lifestyle. Those are my main hubs obviously if you, you if you if you drink spirits uncle near hey is the best i'm trying to world. tell you that ls, LS cream, cream is, is the best crazy. cream sorry bailey i can't bring you i can't believe you ain't bring a bottle i was yeah. drinking it all night we're sitting there i gave you a bottle yeah i was drinking it at the crib yeah and i promise you, you and if you like vodka and gin i just invested in a uh african gin called bayab that's the fruit of the tree of life uh made with the fruit of the tree of life and also vusa vodka so big shout out to uh, my spearhead uh, crew out there. Come on, man. Yeah. Spirits, lifestyle, music, yeah. artistry, man. God is good. Way to go. And hey. I love you, man. I'm going to give you a flowers before I leave. What's Top up? billing not only registers as a hip hop. Uh, iconic hip hop saying, right. but you are top billing, brother. Thank like, you. What you've done, what you've done for the culture and, and culture, you've, you've had a smile on our face for over three decades. Thank you, brother. Yeah. And I'm going to keep on smiling because yeah. I'm winning. I'm getting this money. Yeah. I'm top billing. This is Bill Bellamy. We'll catch you on the next one, baby. Peace. Looking good up there. Yeah, it's next to the left. Yes. Top Billy.